Hey everyone, fantastic to see you here. Thank you for joining me tonight. So let's have a look. Now don't be shy. Uh, I can see, hey Peter. Hi Nigel, hi Galam. Uh, oh, let's just... So you know the deal and the chat box on the right hand side. Tell me where you're from, tell me any questions you've got, anything you like. Well, nearly anything you like. So tonight, where you, you know you're in the right place tonight we're going to be talking about statins and the new research behind cholesterol this is really key uh, so we're going to look at do statins actually provide benefits are they necessary if you've got type 2 diabetes do which clients do they work in and what benefits do they provide and why are there an increased risk of some serious side effects with statins how do they actually work so we're going to cover all of that um, before we get started a common hey Neil, hi bob a common question i get asked and this is to do with statins and cholesterol is one of the key foods that will keep you safe is fat so a high fat diet will protect you. Now, usually I get people going, oh, my goodness, but we've been told fat is, uh, you know, is dangerous. We've been told to avoid fat. We've been told to definitely avoid butters and saturated fat. We've been told to have vegetable oils. Um, you know, well, you won't be told to have margarine anymore, but that's what used to happen. So one of the things you need to know before we go any further is that a high fat diet is what we were designed to live on. Now all the research that I'm gonna share with you and the evidence that I'm gonna share is gonna be talking about cholesterol and how uh, you'll, how to maximize the benefit. Uh, and that of course links into fat because people are terrified if they increase the fat in their diet, they increase the fat in their arteries. Now one of the big things is the two things don't translate. So the best analogy that I've had, and I'll send you a video clip that talks about it, it's amazing, is that it would be like um, there's a lot of fires in the neighborhood, and when there's a fire, the firemen turn up, and it would be like saying, well, the firemen are causing the fire. So when they looked at the uh, hearts and uh, arteries of people that have had heart attacks, they see cholesterol. They see you know, little plaques of cholesterol lining the walls. So what they did was jump to the conclusion that cholesterol is causing the problem. That, and it kind of became a domino effect. So they find cholesterol in these plaques. That means cholesterol is dangerous. That means cholesterol is causing the problem. Now, cholesterol is a kind of fat. Okay, so that then means that cholesterol is bad for us and fat is bad for us. So uh, one of the things that they did in the 80s, and you would have seen it everywhere, is that people would have been told not to have cholesterol in their diet. So if you had high cholesterol, you were told to avoid eggs and prawns and other random foods. We know that there's no correlation. The amount of cholesterol in your diet has no correlation with the amount of cholesterol in your blood vessels. Um, okay, so uh, Dolores is asking a question about catfish and uh, tilapia. I'm probably saying that wrong. Tilapia, however you want to say it, it's a white fish that's generally from the Caribbean. Um, and there's uh, recommendations not to eat these fish. Um, so I think I'll come back to that, Dolores. Uh, it's a good question, and I think I know what they're getting at, but I'll check. Uh, so the idea then is, is that fat is dangerous. The other thing, the other hypothesis that all the scientists were working on was that calories in equals calories out. Now, actually, that had been disproved by the Germans pre-Second War, but because of the war, all of that evidence was discounted. Uh, but they were operating on that premise. Now, fat has twice the energy per gram that protein and carbohydrates do. So protein and carbohydrates are four calories a gram, fat is nine. So if you're operating on calories in, calories out, then that's where the low fat shift came from. So cholesterol in the arteries, they demonize fat, and then the calories demonize fat. So 
hold on, we're going to go for a ride. You may be skeptical sitting there going, I just don't, you know, we've been told not to eat fat. My doctor's even told me to not to eat fat. My doctor's told me to eat vegetable oils. We'll talk about vegetables always another time. Uh, just don't be fooled by the fact that they're called vegetable. That doesn't mean they're healthy, and, and I'll explain why. But not this time. This time we're doing cholesterol, we're doing statins. Um, and I'm going to throw a lot of evidence at you. So just hold on to your objections. If you have any questions that come up in your mind as to how can this really be healthy? Are you sure this isn't going to make my condition worse? My doctor really wants me to put really wants to put me on statins. And you will come across doctors that will label you as non-compliant if you choose not to have the medication they recommend. So this is not for you if you are completely fat phobic and can't get your head around fat being a healthy part of our diet. This is not for you if um, you think your doctor has all the answers or you you're, don't want to push the doctor for further evidence. Uh, because what I'm talking about is becoming your own expert. And a lot of you on this call have already trained your doctors if you like so a lot of you have already made your changes independently gone off and made your own decisions and then you've gone back to the doctors and nurses and they've gone what have you done this is amazing and you train them and that's often what happens so you need to come from a starting point that you can actually be your own expert you are the expert in you you can do your own research you are totally capable of making informed decisions about your health and if that's not you, then this isn't for you. Um, ah, good question, Jeff. Hey, John. Oh, John from Valencia. Okay, we don't want to be talking about sunshine. You probably, oh, and Dolores are probably having a nicer weather than us as well. So, good question, Jeff. Olive oil is not considered to be a vegetable oil. It's the only good one. Now, when I say olive oil, I'm talking about olive oil that is virgin olive oil. That's important. Uh, so the green stuff, the way to know it's proper oil is that actually olive oil is only good for 12 months after it's harvested. So you want to make sure it's got some kind of harvest date on it. If it's in the EU, it'll have an EU registration number on it because it's weird, but there is a lot of fake olive oils out there and it's not a minor thing. Um, big brands have been affected. So in the States, Bertoli, uh, was fined a massive amount and it was actually they technically weren't aware it was one of a separate supply that they buy off so obviously olive oil is more expensive so there is a reasonable trade in fake olive oil so dark glass olive oil is broken down by light so if it's in a clear glass bottle you straight away know it's not high quality oil uh, if it gets cold, it will start to solidify. That's also a sign, not exclusively, but a sign of olive oil. Uh, and uh, making sure it's got a harvest date and definitely a use by date. But olive oil is good. I think the thing to think about is, does this oil exist in nature? So olive oil, if you wanted to, you could go and pick the olives. You could squash the olives and you could get the oil out. You could probably even do that if you tried hard with some sunflower seeds. But the rest of the oils are all mechanically and chemically extracted, not dissimilar to petrol. So you couldn't go and get a bunch of corn and squash it and get corn oil out. You couldn't go and get a, a bunch of soya beans and squash them and get soya oil out. Uh, you know, and the sunflower oil that they're getting is not, it's, you know, well, nastily extracted. So that's the difference. So olive oil exists in nature, it's a natural product, and it's high in omega-3. The other oils are high in omega-6. But again, I'll, we'll do a separate talk about that. Let's do one thing at a time. So you'll see me referring to notes because I am pretty geeky and nerdy and I remember stuff, but I want to make sure I go over this particular study with you in detail because it's going to turn things upside down and it will be different to everything that you've been told and I think the key that you guys need to know is that you guys are ahead of your doctors you guys know information that you are putting into practice today 
that 98% of the doctors worldwide are not acting on. Now that doesn't mean they don't care. That just means that they are incredibly conservative and they take a long time to change. Uh, and there's external pressures on them as well. So there's a lot of peer pressure from what the rest of their doctors are doing or their colleagues are doing. If they do something different, it gets noticed. It takes guts to stand up and say, actually, if I'm just making a decision on the evidence, then I'm actually going to do this. Just because we've always done it this way doesn't mean it's right. And there are doctors out there doing that, and they're amazing. Jason Fung is one, um, and I really do need to get my interview with him up online. Tim Noakes is another one in South Africa. Uh, Asim Mahotra in the UK is on the news all the time, standing up. Malcolm McKendrick, there's loads of them that are now standing up and saying, no, this isn't right. But they are the early people like you. And they get hassled. They get hassled by all of their colleagues. They get given a really hard time. Uh, so this is why it's about you and you informing yourself and trusting yourself. Just because the doctor says different doesn't mean you're wrong. You need to test out the information. So with statins, Right. There is no question that statins do their job well. Statins reduce cholesterol. The question is, does reducing cholesterol benefit you? So if we go back to the firefighters, cholesterol is at the scene of the crime. It's at the scene of the crime everywhere. And what they used to think was cholesterol was the perpetrator. Cholesterol was the one that was causing the problem. Stop the cholesterol, stop the problem. Uh, as we know with the human body, uh, things are never that simple. And what they're finding out now, which I think is amazing, is that they think that cholesterol is the healer. They think that uh, now the new studies are suggesting that a carbohydrate-based diet causes inflammation. And when you get little spots of inflammation in your blood vessels, the body sends along cholesterol to patch the hole, to try and help it heal, to try and protect the body and keep it safe. So cholesterol is the firefighter, it's not the arsonist. The arsonist isn't fat, the arsonist is inflammation, which is caused by vegetable oils, and yes, we will get to that, and um, a carbohydrate-based diet. So sugar or fructose, which is half of sugar, is inflammatory in its own right then carbohydrates are inflammatory in their own right. So if we come at it from a different angle, that cholesterol isn't actually the nasty man, that it's actually trying to fix the problem, then reducing cholesterol would suggest that it wouldn't work. So statins do very well to reduce cholesterol. So the proof would be in the pudding. So then what you would expect is that statins would reduce all cause mortality. So that is a, um, um, something that they use in studies. They talk about all cause mortality. So that means any reason for someone dying. And the idea would be if statins worked, that that would reduce that number so that you would live longer if you took a statin. Okay, that's fairly common. That is the reason that that's the only reason why you take medications. Any medication you're on, metformin, uh, beta blockers, you know, digoxin, um, you know, any medication you're on, you're on it because it's not it's not about improving your quality of life. It's about you live longer, so it corrects the problem. Now you won't be surprised, but with statins there is no reduction. You live the same amount of time. It does not have any additional benefit. So there was a big, and they call it a meta-analysis. That means they get together huge numbers of studies and compare them. And then they pull all the information together and they can make an analysis from that. So they did one of these massive ones. They're talking, you know, 50,000 people and often more. Um, and the average length of time that people had their lives extended by for a statin was three days. Okay, that is not evidence. Now, so that's cool. I mean, you wouldn't mind taking, you know, a bit of a punt on a statin, 
uh, you know, on the off chance that I think someone got up to 21 days, so you live up to three weeks longer, you know, you wouldn't mind taking that risk if you're that one in 10,000 people that gets those few extra days. If, uh, if that was the story, you know, if there was no downside. So if you took the tablet and all it did was drop your cholesterol a little bit and there was no other impact on you whatsoever, then you might think, well, you know, it's, my doctor's recommended it. It's not really a big deal. Uh, oh, hi, Kevin. Um, so, however, that is not the issue. Uh, the You're messing around with the system in the body that naturally is there. So, uh, um, God, I feel really bad, but actually no one can really, they haven't really decided what the cutoff point is for cholesterol anyway. So in different countries, they have different classifications for what is high cholesterol anyway. <laughs> they haven't even agreed on that. Um, so what the big Japanese study found, and this is not the first time this evidence has come out. We've known about it for a while, but this is kind of a massive study that was done over a long period of time uh, that, that then um, agrees with the previous studies. Now, who do you think, and fingers on your keyboards, now do me a favor, fingers on your keyboard, who do you think lives longer? Do you think, and just put yes, that people live longer when they have lower cholesterol and lower LDL? So the LDL, the triglycerides, is what your doctor freaks out about and tells you are really bad. So do you think that people with lower cholesterol and lower LDL lived longer? So you can just type a Y, a yes, whatever you like. See, I'm training you to talk to me. Ah, look, Neil, yep. Kevin, I've trained you guys so well. Okay, who else we got? Yeah, so Tim says yes. Dolores says no. Jeff says no. Um, see, it's great. And you can type in any time, guys. Um, Etta says no. Okay, so based on all the stuff you've been told and the stuff you've been told by your GP, you would expect people with high cholesterol and high LDL to pop their clogs um, earlier than everyone else. That's what we've been told. Um, but actually the opposite is true. And we've known that for a while. We've known there were studies out five years ago that showed that women over the age of 65 live longer if they have high cholesterol. Uh, but it was ignored, well, not ignored, but it didn't fit with the current guidelines so it was just kind of quietly off to the side and they were like well that's only one study and it was only in women and only in women over 65 so we're not going to pay it a huge amount of credence there has been more and more and more and this is more information so with the Japanese study let me just bring up all of my figures so that I can um, so what they're able to show is that as your cholesterol goes up, not just your total cholesterol, but your LDL, which is meant to be the nasty cholesterol, as that levels go up, so does your health. So you are far more likely to die if you have low cholesterol and low LDL um, as you get older than if you've got high. Now I'm going to put one little um, caveat on that. Uh, yeah, don't. Yeah, I'm rocking the boat. <laughs> um, so, high cholesterol, high LDL means you live longer, and there's a number of reasons for this. And I'm going to take you through a whistle-stop tour of what cholesterol actually does in the body and why messing around with it messes around with your health. Um, but I lost my track. Oh, yeah, yeah, Tim. They are. I've taught them well. Honestly, they are teachers' pets. Except for Kevin, I think you and Kevin would get on like a house on fire. I think you should. Um, yeah, actually, probably I shouldn't say that because you two. Oh my God, I can't imagine the two of you ganging up on me. So, um, so we know. So in the Japanese study, and let me just make sure I've got all my little factoids right. So. What they found was that, and it was an eight year study of over 26,000 people. Um, and 
if they had, and it's called hyperlipidemia, so hyper high lipids, fat. So these are people that had high cholesterol. They were much less likely to have strokes. If they did have strokes, the symptoms were much more mild. They recovered more quickly. They died less. Uh, so all cause mortality, remember we talked about that, any reason that they would die was reduced massively as the cholesterol levels went up. So it wasn't just that they were at a particular level and it was better. The higher the level, the longer they lived, basically. So um, I'm just going to come back so I can see you guys. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so the higher the cholesterol, the longer they lived. And that is key. So I'm going to, as always, there is one caveat. And that is there is one type of fat that is the dangerous one that will cause you problems. And that is the fat that is made from carbohydrates. So when you eat carbohydrates, the body wants to store it. And the only way it can store it, excuse me, is by converting it to fat. Now, it doesn't do that job particularly well. And if you're having a high carbohydrate diet, then you've got lots of this nasty, sticky little fat that can cause all the problems and causes inflammation. So normal fat is fine. We are designed for a high fat diet. So let me just whiz you through some benefits of high cholesterol. Now, so we know that people, the elderly with high cholesterol live longer and they're also healthier. We know that um, low cholesterol, so actually, let me start. There's a syndrome called the Smith-Lemley-Oppitz syndrome, don't try and say that fast, which is children that are born without the ability to make cholesterol. So if they survive and are actually born, um, they usually have very, very little brain development because the brain is made up of about 70% cholesterol, um, which is why statins are linked to a much increased incidence of Alzheimer's because they're messing around with the brain function. Um, so, but these children that are born without the ability to make cholesterol are far more, they usually um, actually die from infections. So cholesterol protects you from infections. Um, and when they're given a diet high in fat and cholesterol, they uh, their infections become less serious and less frequent and their autistic and aggressive behavior improves. Okay, so there's a lot of evidence about how cholesterol operates in the body. So cholesterol is protective, cholesterol works on the immune system, cholesterol is incredibly important for brain function, which is why um, if your cholesterol is higher, uh, your brain function is more protected, you are more, your immune system is stronger, your body is just better able to cope with life, which is why all cause mortality is reduced. Okay, so, so Etta, really good question. So if you're sitting there going, oh my God, this woman's gone crazy, uh, then ask me questions. So Etta's saying, how can that be? How can high cholesterol be good for you when cholesterol blocks your veins? Um, so cholesterol the main, will block your veins and your arteries, but it's only doing it um, in response to a problem. So cholesterol is trying to fix the problem. So think of it as, you know, those old fashioned, uh, well, not old fashioned, when you're riding your bike and you get a puncture and you've got that little puncture kit that you put over the hole to try and keep it all working. Now, you know it's a patch. It's not going to keep it right forever, but it's going to help it in the short time. And that's what cholesterol is doing. Cholesterol, there's a problem with the wall of the artery and cholesterol is trying to patch it. Uh, it's not trying to block it. Uh, and the more information there is, the more cholesterol will build up because it's damaged. So what causes the damage in the first place and what we need to be concerned about is inflammation. So inflammation is actually the biggest health problem that exists. Uh, cholesterol, high cholesterol isn't. Systema, uh, systemic inflammation that is through our whole bodies is what causes all of the issues. It's what causes, well, everything. Uh, cancer, heart disease, kind of, you think of any disease that's a disease of the modern world that's diet related and its baseline will be inflammation. 
So inflammation is meant to be a short-term event that helps the body repair. So, you know, you cut your hand and it gets red and that's because all the blood is going there to try it and taking all the supplies that it needs to fix the hole. So just like when you have, you know, uh, a big pothole opens up in the road and they close that little bit of the road off and there's loads of trucks there and they're all coming in with the supplies and loads of people and they're fixing the hole and once it's fixed, they're gone. So that's inflammation. Uh, but imagine if that is long-term and chronic. So inflammation is meant to be acute and fast, fixed, problem done. But imagine what happens if your body, if roads are being repaired everywhere all the time, they're never clear, they're never open, there's always some work going on, there's always traffic snarled up, things aren't flowing freely, the body isn't working properly. So that is chronic, low-grade inflammation. And that is what causes a problem. And they can test for that. There's a blood uh, test that they can test for a particular protein that lets them know your level of information personally. And that is a, uh, they know, they test it. It's called C-reactive protein. You don't need to remember that. I won't test you. Um, and uh, they know that that's a marker of heart disease and a far more uh, reliable marker uh, than cholesterol levels ever are. So they know they can test for that particular protein and it will tell them straight away how likely that person is to have a heart attack or stroke or some other um, heart-related problem. So inflammation is the key. Fat isn't. Fat is your friend. And actually, you know, you're sitting there and going, oh, I don't, fat can't be my friend. But think about your life up until now and you've eschewed fat. You've like done what you've said. You know that fat is bad. You've gone for low fat everything. Uh, you know, and if you have eaten fat, you've felt guilty and you've been living your life that way up until this point. Now, is that working for you? Okay. Are you well? Do you have any health conditions? So kind of the proof is in the pudding. The low-fat approach isn't working. And according to the information, it should. So something's wrong somewhere. And we took a wrong turning. We followed the wrong breadcrumb trail, the wrong uh, research. And yeah, I could go talk to, to, for that till the cows come home. Um, in, you know, initially demonizing fat, and this is where we are. So the cholesterol doesn't block up the arteries. Uh, it only blocks up the arteries in response to inflammation, which is carbs. So a high carbohydrate diet causes inflammation. And I will, for all of you that are here today, I will send out a link to, it's about 16 minutes long, a video from an American news, one of the big American CBN or C, one of the CBS, one of the bigger networks out there. And they did actually a really good story on it. Um, and actually, you know, interviewed the scientists and scientists says, look, you know, we're going for the wrong thing. We need to be focusing on information, which is caused by this. And they say it's caused by carbohydrates and vegetable oils, which we know. Uh, and, you know, and we've been um, scapegoating the wrong diet for too long. And look what's happened. So what I'd advise you to do is don't take my word for it, go and search out some other resources as well. It's always a good idea to get your information from more than one person. Uh, because, well, for two reasons. First of all, there are some weird people on the internet, and I like to think I'm not one of them, but there are some people out there who have their own agendas and you know, will make things sound quite logical, but in actual fact, they're not based in fact. Uh, and what I find for me personally is I like to read two or three different viewpoints of information because it helps me paint a really clear picture in my mind and helps me assimilate the information so it makes sense to me and I'm happy with it. So sometimes searching around and finding other resources can be really helpful. Now, um, my friend Libby is amazing and she has, I've talked about this before, you guys know it, and Kevin did it last week. Ditch the carbs, she's really good. 
there's Chris Cresser, there's lots of people out there. Actually, Tim Noakes is fantastic, The Real Meal Revolution. Um, Jason Fung in Canada, uh, he's Chief of Medicine at Scarsdale Hospital there. He's amazing. So, you know, do your research so that you're happy, that you are happy with what's going on and you can make the changes in your diet because that is the key. You do not need medicines from your doctor. And actually one of the things I need to tell you is that the, the medicines for type two diabetes will not make you better. They might help your blood sugars temporarily, they will not make you better. They're not treating the inflammation, they're not treating the underlying cause. They're symptomatic relief only. And, and actually the only diabetes drug out there, this is my, this is my term of the day, all cause mortality, the only diabetes drug that reduces all cause mortality is metformin. All the rest of them have no benefit. So please don't stop taking them, um, but they don't lengthen your life, which means they don't stop the progression of the disease. Metformin does, and metformin does protect from heart disease as well. The others don't, they don't have that evidence um, even after years. Metformin does. So metformin is the good one. The rest of them only drop blood sugars. They don't have any underlying benefit. So what you guys need to do is to look at diet. That is the key. And it can be challenging. I'm not going to say it's easy because it's not. And actually, for those of you on here, like Kevin has already done it, Bob's already done it, there's loads of the, loads of you guys that are already doing it. It's easy in that uh, you won't feel hungry, you know, you will crave carbs to start with, but then you'll be amazed at how quickly they disappear from your system. You'll see your blood sugars dropping, you'll see your weight dropping. And then you kind of have to get your head around the fact that you're going to eat differently going forwards. Uh, so... It is a fast solution, but it can be challenging. So guys, all of you that are already kind of eating high fat, what did you find most difficult? What, so who have we got here? So I know there's quite a few of you. Oh, look, we got, hey guys, oh look, we got Vince. Etta, lovely to see. Oh, and Dolores. Now Dolores asked me about um, telopia. Uh, probably saying it wrong, and catfish. So um, one of the reasons, uh, I'm not sure about the catfish, but I suspect it could be about mercury content. Uh, and with the telopia the same, they are fish that can be, I don't know if this you know, it was the right wording, but can be unclean. So they can be heavily farmed uh, or caught um, unenvironment, or what do I say? Uh, in an unecologically friendly way, uh, especially the telopia. Uh, that's generally regarded as an overfished fish uh, and it could be about mercury levels. So I will just quickly confirm that. It's a benefit of the internet. Uh, telopia. It's always cool to check things out. So it's important because, for example, tuna being top of the um, food chain has higher levels of, okay, fine. So I have found the other reason. Um, catfish and uh, telopia, the other issue with them is that most fish a high in omega-3. So you guys will all know that oily fish is great for you, eat as much of it as you can. Um, but uh, tilapia and catfish are the opposite. They're high in omega-6. Omega-6 is inflammatory, omega-3 is anti-inflammatory. And what they're meant to do is balance each other out. So we have an even amount in our diet and they all have their own uh, jobs that they do and they work in harmony. Uh, the issue with uh, our modern diet is that doesn't happen. 
So we have about 14 times as much omega-6 in our diet as we do omega-3. So much more of the inflammatory and much less the anti-inflammatory. So they're out of balance. Um, and that is primarily from vegetable oil because we've been told that animal fats are bad for us and vegetable fats are better. So everything is vegetable fat. Uh, so uh, tilapia, unusually for a fish, is high in omega-6, and the catfish will be as well. So that is why they would have recommended that you don't eat it. Now, tilapia, I know, is also regarded as an unethical fish, um, not, not the fish itself. I have no problem. Sorry, tilapia. I mean the way that it's harvested. Uh, so if you're a top two diabetic, and that's something new for me today, then uh, tilapia and catfish are not for you, and that's why they said that. So, thank you, Mr. Internet. So it's all about diet. Now, if you're sitting there and you haven't, um, where am I? And you haven't made changes to your diet, then this is the time to think about it. So you're here, you're watching me, you're taking your valuable time. That means you're serious about taking action. You're serious about finding out about your diabetes. And if you are serious and you're not making food changes yet, then I've got a special course that I've put together that takes you through step by step everything you need to know, including all of the videos that can talk you through why fat won't kill you and why fat will actually save you, why fat is so important in dropping your blood sugars fast and how fat actually helps you lose fat. I know it doesn't make sense. We were at the dinner table tonight and my children said, well, it really shouldn't be called fat then, should it? It should be changed and have another name. Um, and I think, you know, we've got fat in our body, there's fat in our diet. It's very easy for us to make the connection that one causes the other. But actually, fat is what will save you. Fat is what will protect you. So if you want to... Um, uh, Oh, yeah. So Jeff, I've, Jeff has been following my advice and his blood sugars have dropped from 13.5 to 5.8. And there's others on the call just like him. So I know, Tim, you've been making strides. 5.8, do you know where that puts you, Jeff? That puts you in the non-diabetic zone. So uh, what was your last HbA1c, Jeff? That's your diabetes blood test because I know that was really good. Um, Kevin has been going great as well, doing exactly the same thing. Uh, so it seems opposite. It, everything seems opposite to what you do now. But um, it, what we've been doing isn't working. So worst case scenario is that nothing happens, nothing changes. But if you see the guys on here, and Jeff's just taken his, um, you'll see the changes are dramatic. And you know, I'm not the only one talking about, it's called low carb, high fat. There are medical leaders all over the world. And in actual fact, David Haslam in the UK, who's head, uh, he's the top doctor in obesity in the UK. He can't say it publicly because um, it contradicts the NHS or in the UK, anyway, the medical guidelines for diabetes, where you guys are told to eat loads of carbs. Just blows my mind. Um, and, uh, but he said, uh, privately, he said, yes, that's the way to go. And that's actually the way he eats. That's the way the queen eats. Uh, yeah, but it's interesting. I, my son has, uh, had a virus, which, uh, we took him to the doctors to get diagnosed because you do when they've been sick for a little while. And the doctor said, oh, he is this young doctor. I say young, you know, late twenties, early thirties. And he said, oh, give him some extra vitamin C. That will help. So, uh, you know, and when you're in that situation, you're a mother, you're not a medical expert, you trust. And so he, then he said, um, you know, orange juice, give him some orange juice, that's a good way for him to get it. And my little boy looked at me with big eyes, he was like, mommy, can I have orange juice? And I thought, God, I'm a horrible mother. Because they don't get fruit juice very often. So I said to the doctor, oh, he's going to love that he doesn't get fruit juice very often, it's got the same sugar as lemonade. And he looked at me and said, what? And I said, well, fruit juice, it may be juice, but it's got the same sugar as lemonade, so it's not something he has it with the same frequency as he'd have lemonade. It's not something he has every day. 
and the wheels were turning in his head. It, he had never heard that piece of information before. And um, he was processing it and just looking at me like, really? And I was like, well, yeah, check it, look at it. Uh, look at the carbs, exactly the same. And actual fact, if you look at an innocent smoothie, which is a smoothie fruit drink here, it has more sugar than soft drinks. So or soda drinks, depending on where you're from. So, um, so, the, so you know, you guys have information that a lot of the medical people you deal with don't have. And they might argue you on it as well. Um, and I won't get into the whole pharmaceutical drug. I mean, statins, Lipitor is the biggest selling statin worldwide. It is the biggest drug ever. It has sold more than any other drug and is still at the top of the tree. Uh, you know, it's big money. So, there, you know, there's huge, there's a lot to play for. Uh, but I won't... <laughs> We'll leave that side alone. We'll just stick with the research. And the research shows that cholesterol is good for you. I know it's mad. I'm happy. You know, send me uh, if you want uh, um, the papers, if you want uh, a, an easy to digest version of the information, then mary at freefromtype2.com. Uh, you know, email me and I will send you the information out. If you've got truculent doctors, that are not happy with you not taking the recommendations, then send me uh, an email and I'll send you the information to talk to them about. Be that annoying person that goes with printouts from the internet and starts quoting somebody else. Your aim isn't to be the doctor's best friend. Your aim is to get to your best health however you can. Now there is one caveat, I always do this, now, there is a group of people that statins have been shown to help with. Now, this group of people is people that have already had a heart attack. If you've already had a heart attack, statins do offer some protection. And that is not because statins lower cholesterol. That is because statins have a side effect of reducing inflammation. So if you've already had, if you've got active heart disease and have had a heart attack, you'll have high levels of inflammation and the statins help reduce that. So that is how they have their benefit. And people that have not had a heart attack, the inflammation reduction doesn't have any additional benefit. So it actually, uh, well, it doesn't provide any upsides for you. The other thing that statins do is they make insulin resistance worse. So if you're a healthy person who's on a statin, you are 48% more likely to become type two diabetic. It reduces insulin sensitivity. So, uh, so yeah, all around, not my favorite medication out there. So if you're watching this and you want to take action and you want to get in charge of your house, then you want to find out about my blood sugar solution. I'll say that properly, Mary. Your, my blood sugar solution course, which some of you have already done. Uh, and that is four modules that take you through everything you need to know to get your sugars down now. Reduce medications if that's your goal, but get you under control. Now, you'll see when you click on it that I've reduced, well, you might not see because I don't think I've put it on there, but the price is less than it would be normally. And if you let me know and I'll watch out um, let, and I'll check that you've attended the webinar, then you get free sessions with me. Oh, no. Um, so yeah, you get two free sessions with me, which are, is worth more than the course anyway. So Etta is saying, my doctor says, stop listening to the quacks on the internet that we have no idea what we're talking about. Now, that is also, uh, you know, the doctor's lives are made difficult by the internet. People self-diagnose, they come in with weird things, they read something on the internet about a particular supplement and they come in with that and they want to do all of that. And there are definitely people out there who do that. Um, you know, there are definitely weirdos on the internet. Just as there's weirdos everywhere in life, they seem to hide more on the internet than they do in real life. Now, the key is, so if you come across someone spouting something and it is not backed up by evidence, there is nobody else doing it, uh, and it seems dangerous, which I suppose a high fat diet could be classed as being seen to be dangerous, then 
be worried. You know, I saw something really sad the other day. It was um, because whenever there's a serious disease and people are desperate, there are other people that can take advantage. So one of the clear, oh, thank you, Etta. But one of the, one of the clear um, areas is cancer. And I was reading this article that someone had written just saying, it's really sad how people take advantage of them. This woman had turned down conventional treatment to go down the alternative route. And he said, look, you know, I know her background. I know what's going to happen. And it's really, really sad that she's had her head turned and isn't taking the right advice. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I completely understand that. Healthy skepticism is important, really important for, I mean, for the obvious reason that you need to make sure you've been given the right advice. But for the second reason, which is, um, what was I? Oh yeah, belief is everything. So, and this is going to blow your mind. Um, and it kind of blows mine as well. It's still, I'm taking a while to get my head around it. Now, I knew that antidepressant medications weren't particularly effective. I knew, for example, the research shows exercise is more effective than antidepressant medications. But what I didn't realize was a um, huge amount of research being released recently is that antidepressants are as effective as placebo. So they're as effective as a sugar pill. Uh, in all except for people that have se severe depression so if you've got severe or moderate to severe where it's getting kind of dangerous then the antidepressants work um, but for standard everyday depression they're the same as placebo but does that matter because people believe that it's helping so it helps so it's a placebo effect that is actually working with antidepressants rather than the antidepressant medication itself, which is crazy when you think about how frequently antidepressants are prescribed. You know, most people I know would have been prescribed them at some stage for something in their lives. It's very, very common, but actually there is, they're like placebo, but obviously more expensive. So, um, but belief, plays a huge role to play. So if you are making changes in your diet and you're like, you you haven't done your research and you're not completely invested, then it's unlikely to stick. It won't work. Because sometimes it can take a little while for the changes to show up. So for example, with changing to a high fat diet, it takes six weeks for your fat engine to totally get its, you know, its, revs on if you like to totally get working and to be optimized to running on fat because you've taught it to run on carbs uh, so your fat engine which is your main engine takes six weeks to really get going um, and if you don't give it enough time then just before you hit the jackpot you'll stop, go back to how you were eating before so it's really important that your head and your heart are completely invested in the change and that you see the benefits for yourself. Um, so that is the key. So at the end of this, uh, and it's just for you guys, I will put up a link that um, when I shut off, it will redirect to, and it's gonna tell you everything you need to know about the course. Uh, click on, at the bottom, there's some orange buttons, click on those and it will take you through to the sales page so that you can um, buy and come on board. Now I will watch out for that, my team will watch out for that and we will reach out to you and make sure that your webinar people, now if you're webinar people, you get two coaching sessions with me. Don't tell everyone, I won't have enough time. Um, but Neil, and I know I've got a few of you on here that have already had courses with me, you guys have already got what you need. This is for the newbies that are standing out and want to be like you, okay? So I will put that up in a moment. Um, at the end, I will redirect to the page. It's gonna give you all the information about it. Now this is only gonna be live for 24 hours. I don't have many spots and there's, you know, and I like to talk to all of you properly, which is, um, oh God, I feel like, I've given you a bonus that's worth more than the course, but actually I get a big bonus out of it. I get so much out of talking to you guys. So it's kind of my sneaky gift to myself almost, but don't tell everyone. Um, so Neil and Jeff are saying that um, they think that the statins um, contributed to the diabetes. 
So Jeff was given statin around 18 years ago because the doctor thought everyone should be on them. And that was actually the case. They were saying, you know, we should put together a statin and an aspirin and just everyone over 40 should have it. Which at the time, based on the evidence we had there, was a reasonable conclusion. We now know better. And that's the thing. It's about learning, getting the new evidence. What we once believed doesn't have to be true. We now have so many more years of evidence and we have a better understanding of uh, how the body works. So things change and you guys are right on the cutting edge. So I've talked to you guys, see, it's so funny. I always come on, I think it's gonna be half an hour and then we talk for ages and it's fantastic. So I'm going to put the link up now. It won't be there if you come back to it. This is a link just for now, just for you guys, you know, cause you're clearly wanting to take action. So I'll put it up for you now. Let me just see all this technology. Now I need to, where is my little thing? Oh, no. Oh, see, I haven't done. So what I'm going to do actually is just, I've given you a link there. I don't know if I'm clever. See, I don't know if I'm technological enough to let's give this a shot uh, so I'm going to if I click this button it should come up with the link to a web page if I'm doing this right uh, if any if I've got it wrong and any of you have missed out let me know I'll hold it for you for 24 hours don't worry so just email me on mary at freefromtype2.com and I'm going to send out a follow-up email for you guys that will hear and I'll put in the video that I spoke about um, and I'll put the link in as well so you won't miss out but I can't guarantee there'll still be spaces um, because I'm really lucky to be busy and I really do uh, you know I feel very lucky to be busy and actually I wish that there wasn't space for me I wish that you were getting all this from the people that really should be giving it to you which is uh, you know, the medical community. So I'm gonna click the display offer button now and hopefully, oh, hopefully it will help work, maybe. Um, oh, the link works, thanks Vince. Phew, and I put another thing up, but I will be in contact with you. Feel free to ask me questions. Next week, let's do a little bit about vegetables being evil. <laughs> um, we'll look at omega-3 and omega-6 and how that works in your body so that you can understand how the combination of carbs and vegetable oil has been the problem. Okay, so you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for being with me tonight. You know, this puts you in the top 2% of people that are actually taking action to change. And this means that you're going to make the changes and move ahead. Have a fantastic week, guys. And I'll send you out an email tomorrow. Bye for now.